Hey, it's Valerie and today we are going to create a shiny portal scene. Along the way we'll discover some cool tips on how to make this awesome shiny effect coming from the portal. I discovered this technique while creating this personal a project I've been working on lately. By the way, if you want the project file of this animation, you can get it from my Gumroad page and support my channel. And if you want to get my best 90 project files including this one, you can get them in one pack on my website designandmotionschool.com. And of course, if you are into getting better in After Effects and you want to learn with me, you can invest in one of my motion bundle deals that include all of my premium courses, the project files pack and many other amazing bonuses that will help you become a better motion designer. I leave the links for everything I mentioned in the description below. Alright, back to the tutorial. This is the composition settings I'm using. Now, first let's begin by creating the animation, starting with the sphere. I'll speed this process up a little bit because it's very simple stuff. For now, I'm creating a simple intro for the sphere. I'm using scale and position animation. What's more important in this step is that uh, when you're starting to create an animation, especially with shapes involved, I suggest you to work with default colors like red, gray or blue. What I'm trying to say is, in the beginning, don't waste your time designing the scene. This will help you focus on the animation and moreover, it will make the workflow faster because render times will be much quicker without gradients and effects applied from the beginning. Keep this in mind even if you already know how the design should look and what the colors of your projects are. Ok, so after creating the sphere animation, I now move on to creating the portal animation. So first I'll create a new sphere in this scene. And then I'll open the scale and I'll uncheck the constraint proportions so I can make this shape look like a portal. Then I'll create a simple intro for the portal. And again I'm using the scale property to create this intro. Great, so now once I've got the main animation, I'll adjust the position of the portal and start uh, working on the illusion that the sphere goes inside the portal. But first I'll change the color of the sphere so I can see what I'm doing better. Now I'm trying to find a good timing for the portal to open. And once I get it right, I'll finish the scene by creating an outro animation for the portal. To make the motion consistent, I'll make sure that the velocity is the same for the outro animation as it is for the intro. Now I'll find a nice moment in the time to start the outro animation. Great, so once we are good with the timing, let's create the illusion that the sphere gets inside the portal. For this, I'm making sure that I'm standing at the moment when the portal is fully open. Now I'm duplicating my portal layer to use this shape as a mask later on. And now I'll delete the keyframes on my new layer and parent it to my main portal layer. Next I'll open the ellipse and convert this shape into a Bezier path, so I can adjust the shape of the ellipse. I need to do that because it's going to be my mask for the sphere. I'll select the pen tool and create two points here. Now I'll delete this one and then I'll select the two points and drag them down. Next I'll click on them while holding Alt or Option to cancel the curve. Finally all I need to do now is adjust this shape to look like a sort of a tube. I'll press Ctrl or Command and the quote mark key to open the grid and make my life a bit easier. Alright, once I'm done adjusting the shape, now I need to use it as a mask for the sphere. For that I'm setting the sphere to use the alpha channel of this shape. And now all I need to do is invert the alpha mat and this will make the sphere visible only outside this shape, which creates the illusion of the sphere going inside the portal. We can crop the sphere layer at the point where we no longer see it in the scene. Alright, once we're happy with the animation, we can start coloring and designing the objects in the scene. Another tip I want to give you guys is when you want to color the shapes in your scene with gradients, it's much better to use the gradient from the field property of the shape, 
and not the gradient ramp effect. That's because the gradient ramp effect won't follow your shape when you move it. You could create an expression to make it happen, but it's much simpler to use the gradients inside the fill of the shape. I know it can be a bit annoying to adjust the gradient that way because of the small handles that we can barely see, but I personally prefer this rather than messing around with unnecessary expressions just because I'm using a gradient wrap effect from the effects tab. I love to use the gradient ramp effect mostly for background layers or layers that I know I don't need to move across the scene. Alright, so once we finish with the gradient, let's add a nice bright highlight to the sphere. And for this we can add an inner shadow effect from the layer styles menu. In this case, I prefer to place the highlight at the bottom of the sphere. I think it looks very nice. Great, so now after finishing coloring the sphere, let's add a nice gradient for the portal as well. This time I'll use a linear gradient and not the radial. I'll make sure the darker color is in the bottom area. It will help me create the illusion of the portal. Now I'll adjust the colors to fit the design. And to wrap things up, we can add a thin bright colored stroke. It will make the shine effect look much better. Soon you will understand what I mean. Okay, so now that we have the animation and the illusion of the sphere going inside the portal, we can start working on the shine effect. It's actually pretty easy. First, I started by adding a glow effect. I made sure to scale the radius and the intensity. Then, to make the glow look more like a light rays, I added the radial fast box blur effect. I placed the position of the effect in the bottom area of the portal to make the lights go up. I play around with the amount and finally I changed the zoom time from standard to bright. At this point you can play around with the glow effect to adjust your shine effect. You can also move the position of the blur effect to fit your design. And you can also play around with the blur amount. These are the properties you want to explore. But what I wanted to do most was get rid of the bottom light rays inside the portal. For this I used the CC composite effect. All you need to do is make sure the effect is using the same layer it's applied on. And that's how I got rid of the bottom light rays. Another property you can play around with to get a better look is the glow operation. After toggling the blending modes I found out that in this case setting it to add actually looks much better. But if you're using different colors it might affect your look differently. Alright, so everything looks good, now let's finish by adding a nice background to the scene. This time, as I told you guys in the beginning of the tutorial, since it's a static layer we can use the gradient ramp effect from the effects tab. Let's make it radial shape gradient and then create some nice dark color and see how everything looks together. In my case I decided to brighten the background a little bit because it blended too much with the portal. Then I adjusted the gradient position of the portal to get more contrast with the background. And as I told you earlier, the fact that we added a stroke to the portal actually make it look good. Look how it would look without the stroke. So keep that in mind and don't forget to add a nice and thin bright stroke when you create this kind of a portal animation. Alright, so with that said, we have finished the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to like the video and of course subscribe to my channel. You can also leave a comment about what tutorial you want me to create next. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.